Hi guys, welcome back to the vlogs. 12.1, introduction to probability. There is going to be a lot of vocab today. A couple, three formulas on the law of vocab. Okay, probability is the study of how likely it is that some events will occur. There are two types of probability we're gonna look at today. One is called experimental probability, the other is called theoretical probability. Experimental probability is based on observation. Theoretical probability is based on reasoning. I'll give you a second to write the thought you were changing my blog. I was like, are you serious right now? Are you turning the air on? Uh-huh. First one we're going to look at is um, yeah experimental probability. Okay. The formula for experimental probability is probability equals the number of favorable outcomes over the total number of trials. So it's like taking data and you're doing what you want, what you're looking for over the total. Okay. So if I'm flipping a coin seven times and I'm looking for how many times I flip heads. Well, the number on bottom is seven, and the number up top would be however many times seven or heads happened. Okay, and that would be your um, experimental probability. Okay, so we get a problem that says surveyors counted the number of trees in a popular city park. There were 62 spruce trees, 44 firs, 12 oaks, two maples. What's the experimental probability that a randomly selected tree is an oak? What would I need to do? My probability would equal what? What? How many oaks? Um, there are 62. It would be like 12 over the number of trees. Okay, it would be like 12 over the number of trees. So how many total number of trees do you have? Because there are 12 oaks, and that's what we're looking for. What's the oh. experimental probability that an oak is selected? And there are 12 oaks. So what's 62 plus 44 plus 12 plus 2? 101? 20. Do you think I can leave my probability in this form as 12 over 120? No. What do I need to do? Simplify. What does 12 over 120 simplify to? I should always have a fraction. What? No. Does 12 go into 120? Yes. So 1 over 10? So you're supposed to leave in a fraction. That's yes. what she just said. No, but uh huh. No people uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You can go decimal when no one's supposed to leave. You can, well, you can change. We'll talk about when we want it in decimal form and when we don't. When it's asking for just this, we want it left in fraction form. Just leave it, reduce it, you're fine. Okay. When it's asking for like what's the percentage of that, I can use probability and then I'll change my decimal into a percent. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So in this case, I have a one out of ten shot of picking an oak randomly. Okay. Okay. The other one is theoretical probability. Okay. Theoretical probability equals the number of favorable or desired outcomes over the total number of possible outcomes. Number of the outcomes of an event over the number of outcomes in the sample. Okay. Number of outcomes in an event, yeah, over the total number of outcomes. Okay, so here it says a coin is flipped twice and lands on heads both times. What is the theoretical theoretical probability of this outcome if it goes like this? 
heads, heads, then slip two more, tails, heads, then slip two more, heads, tails, and then slip two more, and it's tails, tails. They want to know what is the theoretical probability of that happening? Okay. How can I figure this out? something over two because the total number of possible outcomes is it's a coin. Would it be like mm -hmm. two? Oh. Here's why, Korea. You're thinking correct, but we gotta think a little bit different. It says a coin is flipped twice and lands on heads both times. That's this first segment right here, yes? Mm -hmm. How many segments do we have? Four. Four. So what's my total? Four. Four. Because I have four sets of what I'm doing. Okay, I have four sets of what I'm doing. So it's something over four, okay? So my probability in this case is something over four. So the total number of possible outcomes is how many times you do that? Yes, oh, no. so how many times did I land heads, heads? Mm -hmm. One. 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 Because you have to think of it in segments, so my probability in this is one fourth. I did two, I did four total sets of flipping it twice, but only one of those four was heads heads. Oh. Theoretical probability takes you to think a little bit more. You gotta start thinking a little bit differently. What? And then is tails heads and heads tails the same thing? Uh, no, because order will matter to us eventually. But in this case, all it wanted us to look was, when was it flipped twice at heads? Out of how many times did you have uh, two sets of flipping? So, you had four sets of trials and only once did it come out heads heads. Okay, so it's a one-fourth of your probability. Okay, you have a fair die. What does that mean if I have a fair die? It's just like this. Okay, what does a regular die look like? One to six. One to six. What is the probability you will roll an odd number? How do I set that up? Well, how many, wouldn't it be how many odd die out of six? Like how many odd numbers out of six? Correct. Good job, So you do three out of six, which gives me what? One So you have a 50% chance of rolling an odd number because one, three, and five are odd on a die, two, four, and six are even on a die. Okay? Here's a little bit more complicated one. If you roll a pair of dice, what's the probability that the total on the two dice will be seven? For the total? Is that theoretical? Wouldn't it be out of 12? Is it theoretical? Yeah. I don't know, is it? Yes. Why do you say it's theoretical? Because there's like, like the last one. Um, possibly. You're on to something, so how would I set that up? If it is theoretical, how would you set it up? Okay, what are all the possible outcomes? So everything that equals seven. No. Well, yes and no. I don't understand what you're asking right now. I don't understand. If you're saying all the total possible outcomes, okay, all the total possible outcomes, that would be like everything possible that you could roll. How many options are there total out of what you can roll? Think about this. A dice has how many? Six. And if there are two of them. No. No. What? 36. 36. Oh, because six There are 36 options to oh, choose from. Shit. Because I could have six and one. I could have six and two. I could have six and three. Six and four. Six and five. Six and six. Five and one. Five and two. Five and three. Five and four. Five and five. Five and six. You get what I'm saying here? Okay. So you have the probability for this is out of 36 options. What do you mean one out of six? What? What do you mean one out of six? One out of six? Why do you think it's one out of six? Yeah, Korea. I don't know. Right. It's really going to be like one out of six. Okay, look. If I have a dice, look. I have the numbers one, two, three, four, five, and six, right? And then I have this die here. And the numbers also are um, one, two, three, 
four, five, and six, correct? Mm -hmm. If these two um, get rolled, what do you get? Two. Yeah, you get a one and a one, right? I get a one and a two, I get a one and a three, right? One, four, one, five, one, six, right? And I can make this chart all the way down. Two, one, two, 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 three, two, four, two, five, two, six. Three, one, three, two, three, 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 four, three, five, three, six. Four, one, four, two, four, three, four, 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 five. There's six ways, so it'd be one, six. So if I have this, you're right, but if I can't visually see that, okay, then I have to draw it out. This adds to be seven. This adds to be seven. This adds to be seven. Seven, seven, seven. So you have how many total options? Six. Six. Okay. If you cannot do that mentally, you need to draw it out like that. So I get six over 36, which means I have a one over, one over six chance of rolling a seven between the two die. No one cares. Okay. Three is right. What I say, know. I just Bryce said no one right. cares. Okay. You can do it mentally in your head that way, if you can visually see it, or you can make a diagram and chart it out. On your homework, they might ask you to make a diagram anyhow. Do so if they tell you to. Okay, but that's what we're looking at. Then we get to this. Okay. 70% of the students in a town go to one school and the rest go to another. The city council wants to decide which school will get a new football field based on the probability of some chance outcome where the probability matches the student's percents. Okay. How might they do this by flipping a coin? What do you think? What should we do? Think about this. They said they want to base it on the um, student percents. What do you know about the student percents? 78%. Okay, 78% of part of the town goes to one school. So what would the other part be? Okay, so let's just round it to 75 and 25%. So we have easy numbers to work with. Okay, so 75% equals um, part one of the town. And 25% equals part two. Okay. We're just going to round it to something a little bit easier to work with. If I am flipping a coin, okay, think about points. Let's say that we, since we just did, broke this into 75 and 25, we're going to break this into four parts, okay? And we can use the same data they gave us before. If I flip a head and a head, if I flip a tail and then a head, a head and then a tail, or a tail and a tail. I can break it up into four different segments. <coughs> Meaning, I could say any of these three, any of these three things, but I can choose any of these, okay? I could say if we roll double heads, then part two gets a new football field. If you roll any, if you flip anything else, Part one gets part gets the football field. Why would that make sense and be fair? Because part two has less of a percentage of the Yeah, because part two is only twenty five percent of the whole, right? Mm -hmm. So if I'm doing it on, um, they said doing it by chance on a percent, that means that. That segment that only represents 25% of the town only has a 25% chance of getting what they want, okay? And if you're using a coin, you have to do two tosses because 
what's the likelihood on a coin of getting a heads? 50%. So that doesn't work for us. So I have to flip it twice to come up with all my options. I could have said, um, if I roll tails and then a heads, or flip a tails, then a heads, part two gets um, the football field. If I, roll, if I flip anything else, part one gets it. I can choose any of these four segments. Does that make sense? Now it says, how about using a deck of playing cards? Thinking about playing cards, how many cards are in a deck? 52. Okay. And you want to come up with a probability of how that would work. Okay. So, let's think about this. Um, if you have 52 playing cards, Probability of picking a school. How can I work with that? Think about percentages. What? Isn't there are four types of each? There are. There are four types of cards. You can break it up that way. That's a good idea. So you could say if you pick a spade, it goes to the school the part two with 25%. And if you pick any other suit, it goes to whatever. Or you could even say, let's take away two of the 52 cards. How many cards would that leave us with? 50. 50. Let's take the joker and the leg. Okay. <laughs> let's take away two of the 52 playing cards and you get 50 cards left. Okay. This originally was 78%, right? Yeah. Which means this would be 22%. Okay, so if that's 78%, is there a way to figure out how many cards would be 78% of 50? Yes. How? Yes. Yeah. What is 78% of 50? It's over the O. It is, is I over the O. 78% of 50. 39. Not 30. 39. <laughs> so I what, I, what you could do is you could take 39 of those 50 cards and write um, write part one or 78 percent and if you draw one of those out you get your um, football field for the part that has 78 percent. You can do it a couple different ways. I need you just to start thinking of things you can do. Last thing we need to talk about is called expected value. Your expected value is, is the predicted value of a variable. Okay, So if something has an expected value, that means it has a predicted value of what that variable is. Expected value formula is the sum of parentheses, okay, it's like a dis distribution problem, each outcome times its probability. So the sum of, and you're going to multiply it by each outcome times its probability. And then we get this lovely word problem that we can work with here. It says calculate the expected value of a lottery ticket when there's a $10 million prize and a 1 in 40 million chance of winning. Okay? So my expected value, okay, my expected value would equal what? What is your sum or what is your chances of winning? 1 in 40 million. So it would be 1 over. 40 million times, right? What is your outcome? What do you get if you win? What's your outcome? Ten million dollars. Times your probability. What's your probability of winning?
you have a 1 in 40 million chance of winning, right? Okay. So it's each, it's the sum of each outcome times its probability. So I have 1 over 40 million. Oh, so you can write this back. Yeah. Times 10 million plus what is my um, probability? What would be your probability? If you have a 1 in 40 million chance of winning, what's your probability? What? 1 in 40 million? Mm -hmm. That's your chance of winning, not your probability. Your probability would be taking 40 million and subtracting 1 from it, which would give you 39,999,999 over what? Over what? What do you think it's over? Yeah, over 40 million. <laughs> now, I have to add that to what's the um, percentage, what is your probability of winning that, or what is your um, expected outcome of that? That expected outcome is a 0% chance. Okay, so I take what my expected outcome of winning is, and I add it to the expected outcome of me not winning. Okay? So when I multiply this together, I get 10 million, right, over 40 million, correct? Mm -hmm. And what is my chances of not winning? This yeah. times zero, which so gives zero. me... Zero percent chance. Oh, so what's ten million over forty million? Maria. Reduce down to one fourth. one fourth. So you get one fourth plus zero. Okay, one fourth plus zero. What is one fourth? The expected value would be what in this case? One fourth would represent what money wise? <laughs> that shouldn't be too much. What? Oh, okay, shit. sort of, yes. Not 25, um, it is 25, but not 25 like as in a whole number, but 25 cents. Okay? So you have an expected, because this is a fraction. Wait, so you wait, have wait. an expected value of winning 25 I cents. I was right. <laughs> Screw it. She said a quarter. <laughs> That's 25 cents. My no. Okay. So you have an expected value of winning 25 cents if you play this lottery. I like my odds. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, very interesting in that, oh. in that case. You okay. So, a quarter. so is that not that? No, it is. We're going to get there. We're not done yet. We're not done? Okay, so your expected value is the sum of each outcome times its probability. Okay? So my outcomes, okay, my expected value, okay, would be 20.5. Because you're going to take 0.3 times 10 plus 0.7 times 25 you get 20.5. Oh, no, okay. that's a different thing. Yeah, that's my expected value. That's my expected value of what I would make off of my lottery ticket. You would make 25 cents off your lottery ticket. Yeah, and your lottery ticket could probably cost you six bucks. Um, and that's why we don't play the lottery. Oh, I'm sorry. So like subscribe, comment to me at David about anything else to add to Faith in Korea. I want to go home. I can't do this anymore. <laughs> okay, good.